Hi everyone. In this video, let's try to understand how does uh, Azure VM uh, managed identities work. So there are two types of identities with specifically virtual machines, uh, Azure virtual machines are offering and uh, how it is widely used in, uh, in an Azure environment and what are the benefits of it uh, and how do we create and uh, uh, the this managed identities we'll look at it in the further coming uh, in this session so what is in managed identity how does it work so the managed identity uh, will be managed uh, will have the Azure AD uh, authentication support so when you wanted to connect your code which is running in a virtual machine and we when we consider that the code is running in a virtual machine and when it wants to the code wants to go to the SQL database and access the data and accordingly generate uh, their response to the customers and everything. That is when we need to, this code wants to authenticate itself. Uh, and here managed identity come as saying that instead of using your code uh, credentials, you give in your code the credentials of SQL DB to authenticate itself, you will the create managed identities for a virtual machine and that managed identity is in fact uh, an you uh, service principle uh, in Azure AD and when when that is actually like a user uh, or a user it's a, like a type of a uh, credentials and that uh, using that managed identities we can actually uh, assign access to SQL DB so instead of using credentials in the application code even the credentials are like not hard coded and are kept in Azure key vault and use instead of it we can prefer one option is create a managed identity for the Azure virtual machine by Azure itself and that managed identities are uh, in fact uh, uh, having are uh, connected with Azure AD for authentication and they generate tokens Azure AD tokens and they can uh, if you assign to the managed identities any permission to the SQL DB and virtual machine code whichever code is running in that virtual machine can authenticate directly to the SQL DB without any of the credentials and that is how widely used uh, when we use managed uh, when we are using Azure virtual machines uh, managed identities are widely used in that so there are different types of managed identities so we, we, let's jump into more understanding about it normally when we have this virtual machine we have this code uh, the application code actually retrieves the credentials from key vault and authenticate connect to the respect to services and get the data and everything and back and then it runs the application but managed identities we are assigning directly an identity to the virtual machine and that virtual machine identity uh, we will uh, can directly give access to that uh, whichever respective services the man, uh, virtual machine wants to connect with or the code which is running the workload which is running in the virtual machine wants to connect with the respective Azure resource can be done with the RBAC permissions and everything. So uh, this is uh, a very important topic and it's more security domain where we have to look at it because if they are not being utilized properly uh, there could be a uh, uh, data leak issues and uh, uh, security issues in fact uh, so how does that work and so this is what I was trying to say that we will create a managed identity for the service either it could be in uh, uh, virtual machine or app service and everything so we can create a managed identity and using this managed identity we will uh, is managed by the Azure Active. It, it's not when I say managed, uh, it supports the Azure AD authentication, and Azure AD can in fact help in terms of uh, um, ensuring that the managed identity can be given access to the respective service. So this way, a service A can connect to service B using the authentication mechanism. So the authentication mechanism is going in this way from managed identity to Active Directory and Active Directory to uh, to the service B. And there are types of managed identities. One is a system assigned identity and the user assigned identity. What is a system assigned identity and a user assigned identity? So when you assign a system assigned identity, uh, if you are looking at uh, this, uh, uh, the system assigned identity, you create, uh, it, you are, cre you are ensuring that you are managing the Azure manages this identity of secret or the certificates, whatever it is. 
you just create an a system assigned identity and link it to azure or vm and that's it uh, that's what you do and uh, the rest will be taken care by maintenance by azure so this is like not managed by azure ad it's managed by azure and that supports azure ad authentication and automatically you can assign the role assignments like uh, saying that uh, give access to sql or key vault or resource group or subscription and accordingly the azure from azure vm you can access the respective azure services so uh where will we use system assigned identity and where will we use user assigned identity is what you will get interview questions so you'll be questioned like what is the difference between a system assigned and a user assigned and why do we use system assigned at what stage and what do we use for user assigned uh, identities so your system assigned is actually like each virtual machine will have its own system ID uh, managed identity and uh, that's why i try to give one more example here like every there are four virtual machines that means four system identities will be there and uh, definitely each system assigned is only linked to only one virtual machine and uh, you have to give access to each of these identities to the respective uh, roles permissions to the uh, any either sql or a key vault or a subscription or resource so when you have numerous virtual machines or like when you have workloads which are running on different virtual machines then it is not recommended to have a system managed identity but if you are having one virtual machine and one workload is running in that virtual machine itself then you can go we prefer a system assigned identity from which you can that machine can access the uh, the respective azure services and everything uh, this is very preferable when uh, why because it's a system assigned managed identity system assigned identity will be managed by azure so you don't have any trouble in terms of rotating the secrets or managing that in a key vault secrets and everything now whereas uh, uh, when you have numerous workload uh, when you have number of workloads to be running on different virtual machines and each virtual or same workload which is running on different machines then you preferring system assigned managed identity and assigning to each of it an access permission is more tough in that kind of cases you will prefer user assigned identity user assigned identity says that like you have numerous machines instead of uh, creating each system identity for each machine create a user assigned identity and link you user assigned identity to each of these machines and then give an access to the user assigned identity to the respective uh, resources like subscription or resource uh, resource group or key vault or sql database so this is how uh, so when you have that like so easier manage so because you maintain any change these credentials and everything uh, automatically uh, or you change the access permissions automatically all vms will have that change access but here you have to individually go to each identity and make changes to it and uh, but this is user assigned identity is user assigned ma identity ma is managed by a uh, user not by azure so you have to user has to take care of uh, rotating the secrets and everything in terms of user assigned identity and or giving the uh, ensuring that uh, the permissions are in place so how do you create a system assigned identity so when you go into vm you see the option of identity you can under the operations you will find uh, sorry under the uh, uh, settings you will be finding the identity and you click on that and you can uh, select on system assigned and uh, you have to enable the status as on and then you have to save it once you save it then you will be finding this when you be in the system assigned instead of you seeing there like uh, nothing you will be finding these two items which is object id and the permissions now you have to select you have to assign a role to this identity like which resources they have to access so you have to click on this and once you click on that uh, you will be taken to a different blade and there you have to click on add role assignment and then you have to select you have to give you do you want it to give it uh, access to a subscription or resource group or key vault or storage or sql storage so that uh, the azure vm will automatically will connect to that respective services at ease and you will assign a role and this is how you can actually ensure that your vm has been having a system assigned created a system assigned identity and you're giving access to the specific services in azure now if you're wanted to use an user assigned identity it's a bit more different you have to first go to uh, the azure portal tab and you have to search for managed identities select it click on create and then 
you have to name the as managed identity user assigned managed identity in the respective region where the machines are once that is done you will go to the vm select the identity click on uh, you have to go to the tab of user assigned uh, tab instead of system assigned and then you have to click on add you will be finding here when you created a user assigned identity you will be finding that when you search it here and once you uh, once you are done with it uh, this means that you have linked the user assigned identity to a virtual machine now the same user assigned identity which you can actually go into the other virtual machines and link in the same way, the same user assigned identity. But whereas system assigned identity, it will be independent for each machine. So there will be, uh, and uh, so let's see in terms of portal, how will we do this? So if I go into machines and as I mentioned, if I enable this and I click on save, I will be finding the role assignments and I can assign any specific role. So if I click on this and I select subscription and I can select a role here, contributor or anything. This is a very risky item to do this way. We can, in case if the machine is compromised, you, they can have, the attacker can have access to the subscriptions. This is not recommended way, but you can give it to a resource group or to a specific SQL service and everything uh, when and ensure that it is being managed properly. Now, if you're going with uh, uh, user assigned identity, then you have to first disable this and click on this. You have to create a user assigned identity. For that, what did I just say? You have to search for managed identities and you'll find that here. Click on create. Click in the same, create that same identity in the same region where the machine is residing. And once that is done, you can go inside e, uh, each of the machines in that region and uh, you can go to the identity and just you can add the same identity one identity itself to entire things and uh, then when you wanted to give an access like uh, uh, to us uh, so i i gave access to the uh, system assigned identities right now the same way how can you give access to the services for user assigned identity Suppose let's take a uh, resource group. You can go into the IEM access control for each of this. Either it's a resource or resource group or anything. These are the common things. So access, you go into that one role assignment and you will select a role. And when it comes to members, you will select, you will select this option of managed identity and uh, whatever managed identities, which you have created, you will be able to find it here and you can assign that role. So that's how a user assigned role will be given access to the respective services in Azure. And this is uh, the way to use managed entities. And uh, so the most, remember the most common questions which you will be facing is, what is the use of a uh, system assigned identity and what is the use of a user assigned identity and where do we use what? So stay tuned for more videos. Thank you. And please subscribe to the channel.